broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ to North America and people around the world. We welcome you to TCT Alive. Our faithful prayer partners are here to take your important calls. So join us today for an inspirational time of interview and song. TCT Alive. Now, join us for this special presentation. For this is the day the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Hi, I'm Larry Mack, Senior Pastor of Greater Than Dreams Church, and I'm your host today on TCT Alive because Jesus is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he does for one, he'll do for another. And guess what? God is going to do something wonderful for you right here on this broadcast. We want to thank Dr. Garth and Tina Kuntz for celebrating over 34 years of ministry, preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, the gospel's being preached right here on TCT, Total Christian Television. Listen, you might want to sow seeds of prayers and sow seeds of finances into TCT because it is fertile ground. The Bible says, beloved, I desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He was speaking to a person by the name of Gaius. Gaius was a man that supported the ministry of God. And when you support God's ministry, God cannot help but bless you. So always remember to keep us in prayer and sow your financial needs, seeds in because it's because of you, your prayer, and your support that causes great programs like TCT Alive to be seen around the world. So God bless you. We got a wonderful show. I have here in the studio my good friend John Burton. He's an anointed man of God. He has many books that are out. He's a revivalist, so you might want to pick up the phone and call some Somebody and tell them to tune in because God has a wonderful word of revelation for you on this broadcast. Amen and amen. John, what's going on? Man, I'm ready to erupt. Let's go. Let's get this <laughs> right. thing going. God bless you, man. You're looking yeah. sharp, Devin, there, and good looking. Hey, come Amen. On. So uh, they tell me you've been married a little bit, and you've been saved a little bit of time, and you wrote some books. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I've been I've been on a crazy, wild journey. I mean, my wife. Yeah, we our anniversary is in a few days. So my anniversary is so, in a few days. Yeah, too. All, yeah. <laughs> so Amy, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> and uh, four kids. Smart uh, man. <laughs> yeah. See, I tell you what, man. I know what I'm doing. And four kids we moved here to Detroit a couple uh -huh. years ago and and uh, my heart is my, I'm just continually wrecked yes I'm just messed by God and uh, something's coming I know there, there's re, there's legitimate revival I'm uh, you know my heart is is to go after the real thing uh, I'm not interested uh, in hype and exaggeration and all the stuff let's just do the real stuff yeah God's ready yeah when you say let's do the real stuff what do you mean by that well you know I think we have a lot of big ideas I mean we can we can in our humanness I mean we yes. can get creative yes. we can get real creative but I think the moment we we start we limit ourselves to our imagination or if we exaggerate or we hype it up it's at that point that we limit God wow. I mean I mean you are serious I mean if God if God is God I told him one day I said if you're not if you're not God if you're not everything that you're cracked up to be I don't want anything to do with you come on but if you are yes. I mean if you are why don't you surprise me because I'll die for you I mean yeah. I'll come you, on man. just just do whatever you can do and I my heart's craving Old Testament style miracles New Testament style miracles and you know we look around the world right now and and certainly a lot of good is going on but but Boy, is not is God not bigger? I mean, really, truly bigger, greater? Uh, can't He do some of this stuff? Of course He can. Yeah, you know, the Bible says in John six twenty nine that this is the work of God that we believe. So I think the only work that we got to do is come into a place of believing God to be God. Yeah. And I think we limit Him in our humanness. Yeah, and and you know, belief is. I think we try to you know, oomph up our faith, you know, we try to strive to that place, you know, and I and understand, and sometimes there's a process and we have to wrestle at times, but for me, the best, the easiest breakthrough for me is when I just simply believe. Wow. Just, just easy confidence, you know, faith is confidence. It's like, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you are God and you do stuff. Let's let's go for it. Yeah, you know, that's amazing because um, when I was in the Mojave Desert, um, I noticed there were mountains back there. And the closer I got to the mountain, it seemed like the bigger the mountain grew. But really, it was my proximity to the mountain that caused it to be bigger or smaller. And I think that when we get closer to God, God seems so big. When we're far away from him, then it makes God small. Yeah. And I think it limited our belief. So when you talk about a simple confidence, a simple belief, I think it has a lot to do with your proximity to God. 
Oh yeah, and can I, I'll tell you a real quick story yes. that just just rocked me. Uh, recently, I was I was uh, I was in the bathroom. God shows up in the bathroom. I'm not sure what that's all about, but I was in the bathroom. I was all alone. All of a sudden, the presence of God landed in wow. in the bathroom, and I'm like, I was stunned. I was like taken by surprise, and it was so heavy. It was so real. I was trembling, mm -hmm. and and my. Uh, uh, an initial thought was, you know what, God's here, and I felt so, like you're saying, so close to Him. I'm like, boy, I can, uh, I can approach the throne of grace boldly right now. I can ask for anything, but it was, it was very, very interesting. I thought maybe I'll, maybe I'll pray about some financial stuff right now. You know, money seems to be something we pray about. You know, it's kind of one of the things that comes up. And, but my confidence in Him was so crazy strong, and He was so real. I knew I didn't even have to, I didn't have, even have to pray at all. I just. I just sat there. I just I enjoyed his presence. I didn't ask him for anything, you know, because wow. we know he knows what we need before we ask. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to love on you. I'm going to let you love on me. I'm going to enjoy you. You're going to let, let you enjoy me. And I, I know everything's taken care of. Man, that very day, an hour or two later, uh, I got a you know, check in the mail. We're always praying for the check. I got a check in the mail from someone I barely knew, uh, over $2,000. Mm -hmm. And that very same day from another source, source $3,000. Wow. And, and I attribute it to not, not stressing, not, you know, sometimes we can pray doubt-filled prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the more we strive, it's because of, the, because of our doubt. Yes. Sometimes we can set back in peace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love what Bill Johnson says. You know, the Bible says that, that uh, he wants to give us peace that passes understanding. Well, if we want the peace that passes all understanding, then we have to, we have to uh, renounce our right to understand. Wow. And Amen. I'm like, that's powerful. And yes. so I just, you know, just, all right, God, show up, and he did. Yeah, you know, the, the Bible does say, like in Psalm 78, 40, says that they limited God. And God was, like, upset with them because they limited God. It's yeah. kind of like our children come to us. You, you, you take them to Disney World, okay? They could come home. Now I want to go to Water World. Man. Now I want to go to the park. Now I want to go. I'm like, listen, can you just be, like, satisfied? You know, uh, you, you want grateful children, you know, whatever. But God wants us to be that way. Yeah. I mean, really, don't limit what he can do man and I, I tell you i get freaked out mm -hmm. i totally get freaked out sometimes that i do not want to die before yes. i do everything Glory i'm supposed to, to do yes. i experience god as 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 deep as i'm to experience him yes. I've, I've got to i've got to go after god i've got, you know i tell him you know if we if, if he were here right now in fullness we die yes. i tell him this show up right before it's, it's right up to that point right before i die i want that much of you wow and Glory. yeah just yeah. just just explode me yeah, you know, um, in your in your book, uh, your book called Revelation Driven Prayer, I think is an outstanding book. You you mentioned something that Job said uh, right here in the back. It says Job eleven seven. Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? Yeah, that's a really wonderful scripture. Can you enlighten us a little bit on that text? Yeah, the the, the whole concept of that book is that it's it's what it's what you read. God is phenomenally huge and, and the reality is I mean we, we, he created the universe he created lightning he I mean and he's in us mm -hmm. which that makes no sense but he is yeah. and so if every answer in the world all the power in the world is in me right now right now as I'm sitting here I mean right now as you're sitting there mm -hmm. all the power in the world is literally in you wow. in me wow. that changes everything wow. so my, my I put I put my human wisdom aside. I'm like, you know what? I could come up with some ideas, some plans. I could go in a certain direction. And some of that's appropriate. You seek out counsel. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what in the world? It's this close. The Bible says he's, he's near. He's here. He never forsakes us. What could happen if I released everything and I, and I, and I tuned in, zoned in, and I let God reveal his plans? Yeah. You know, the scripture says, uh, he, th he says that uh, your body is the temple of the Spirit of God. Yeah. And so that means that God is living in us. We are the tabernacle. Yeah. We are God's dwelling place. And when you say zoom in or tune in, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, we're, so we're the temple. I think a lot of times in, in, the, in the church or in Christianity, things are, you know, they're concepts or principles. It's like, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, really, really, I mean, think about the pillar of fire. I mean, think about, I mean, so there's a pillar of fire in me. There's, there's open heavens over me. There's, wow. I mean, I mean, God himself, I'm, if I'm the temple, if that's, if that's accurate, which it is, that means I'm a walking pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a walking cloud by day, fire by night. I'm, 
I'm, I mean, I care. I mean, I'm an Ark of the Covenant. Yes, you know, right. I can walk into the Jordan River. It can split, not because of me, but yeah. because I'm walking. With, I have superpowers. Come on. Come on. Yeah, 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 I've got su I can, I can heal the sick, raise the dead. Yes. I mean, really? It's time we stop, you know, hearing about raising the dead, healing the sick, and thinking that, okay, maybe someday that's a good idea, maybe. Well, let's just do it. Amen. Let's just do it. We've seen so many healings in our church recently. I'm just, I'm floored. I'm, I'm humbled. And this is God being God. Yeah. You want to give us a testimony of some of the healings that's been taking place? Yeah. Yeah. We've, I mean, we have an internship called the lab. And in the lab, we go after God specifically uh, in praying in the spirit. Romans 8, 28, or 8, 26. Romans 8, 26 yes. talks about groans that can't be uttered. Mm -hmm. And, and the intercession of the spirit. Yes. And what follows that is the famous verse, Romans 8, 28, Talks talks about that uh, uh, all things work together for good. Well, but it starts with and yes. the word and all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Well, we got to back up if we pray in the Spirit. If the inter if yes. the Spirit intercedes through us, if all of that's happening, then we love God. Then our callings come mm -hmm. into place. So, in, you know, in the internship, we're doing this. We're praying and groaning in the Spirit, roaring the Lion of Judah just erupting. And I believe that set the table for some some healings. Last night, a young lady comes up to me just shaking at the end of the service, just floored. And she, she's had ulcers all up and down her esophagus. She, she, would, she would cough up blood uh, and, and, and just a very simple yet, yet very powerful moment of healing. I told everybody, you got superpowers. Just start releasing them over people. And she got healed. I mean, she's like, she was stunned. Yeah, you know, oftentimes when you meditate the book of Romans, and you probably can help me with this, Romans 6.14 says sin has no dominion over us. We're not under law, but under grace. Yep. And then he goes on to say, shall we sin that God, uh, that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. But then Romans 8.27, uh, the Apostle Paul, chapter 7, Romans 7, going from 6 to 7, the Apostle Paul is dealing with, uh, you know, when I want to do good, evil is present, you know, rich man that I am. Romans 8.20, Romans chapter 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Then when you go into these verses, he said, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. I think the primary infirmity, you can help me with this, John, the primary infirmity is our inability to produce results like Jesus. Oh, boy, come on. And then when you go into, he said, now the Holy Spirit will help us that all things work together for the good. So everything that I've experienced at this point in time, he's gonna cause to work together for my good as if it was supposed to happen on purpose. Then we go into being sons of God or manifest, because yeah. we are sons of God. That's right. It were, but the manifestation of the sons of God, we can't do it without the work of the Spirit. Yeah, and I believe it's, I believe it's Luke 9 where, where, you know, it's the famous verse of, of shake the dust off your feet, you yes. know, if they won't receive you. Mm -hmm. But if you look into that, the, the instruction is, is to release the message of the kingdom yes. and to heal diseases. Yes. And I'm telling you what, when the church does those two things, yes. you know, the message of the kingdom is a striking message. And there's reason why some would resist or reject that message mm -hmm. so the so the shaking the dust off your feet if we preach that with the power of the spirit i mean we see with peter in acts chapter 2 he the, he brought a a piercing message yes you know uh, uh uh unapologetic message so the message of the kingdom is can be quite offensive yes. but if we couple that you know what happens if someone comes into your house gives you the striking love based but striking message of the kingdom mm -hmm. and it, it riles you up because it's calling you into another reality but then I also heal you of cancer. Praise God. I mean, where does that leave you? Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I think we can. You know where it leads us? is leads us like this. I want what you got. Exactly. Because I know some people that need this. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say the message of the kingdom, um, what is the message of the kingdom? Um, because oftentimes we think the message of the kingdom is a message of Jesus saves you to take you to heaven. Yeah. But I believe the message of the Kevin kingdom is Jesus saved you to bring heaven to you right now. Absolutely. On earth as it is, as it is in yes. heaven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 I talk about the principle of the money changers quite a bit. And the, okay. The, in my opinion, the, the, the issue with the money changers yes. was that they were using, they were using the temple mm -hmm. for personal gain. Yes. They were using, if I could say it this way, they were using the church for personal, for personal gain. Got you. And so the, the idea is they go into the temple mm -hmm. with the expectation of leaving with more than they entered with. Wow. And we see this in the church hey, wait today. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep. They go into the temple yep. leaving. They're, they're using the temple. Okay, they who want is they? The leaders the money or the changers. people? Or what, the money. Money changers going into Who sell. is the money changers? The money changers going in to, to, to sell, to make a profit. Got you. So they're in, and Jesus, where Jesus gets violent and mm -hmm. turns the tables of the money changers, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, and he says, my house is a house of prayer for all nations. Yes. He's, bringing, he's, he's bringing 
order. He's yes. bringing reformation to the church. Yes. It's like the church is not here for you to use the church. My definition of, of religion is man's attempt to use God to get what he wants. Yes. And so they were using God or they're using the church to get what they wanted. And so the, the temple is not to be a place of, of, of uh, making a profit. Yes. It's to be a place of bringing a sacrifice. So you go into the temple mm -hmm. with the expectation of leaving with less than you entered with. Yes. And God being God, he pours out yes. to the point of overflowing. Yes. But I, be I believe we're going to see this reformation in the church. The message of the kingdom is the message of the cross. Yes. You know, Peter renounced the cross right after Jesus called him the church. Wow. Right after Jesus called you, you are the you're the rock. You know, on, on this, I'm going to build my church. Right after that, Jesus talks about dying. Mm -hmm. Peter renounces him, and that's the reason why Jesus was so violent when he said, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. It was, it was an assault, unwittingly, on Peter's part. It was an assault against the cross. Wow. And so we need to see, see this in the church today. The message of the kingdom is a call to the cross. It's a call to surrender. It's a call, it's a call to prayer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all of that, and it's a call to life, because life only exists in the in the presence of God according to his in, in him we live exactly in him we move in him we yeah. have our being yeah. now now when you say a call to the cross uh, was that a call to so explain that to me you yeah because you know there's probably someone in our viewing audience that don't realize that God did say pick up your cross yeah. and follow after me yeah there was uh, about 20 years ago now I'm getting I'm getting old 20 years ago Mm -hmm. um, God was rocking my life. He was showing up in my life. Long story short, uh, I, was in a, I was in a prayer room at a, at a youth lock-in in YMCA late at night and, and went in there. It was all by myself, dark room, beautiful windows overlooking the city. And, and um, I'm worshiping God. It was awesome. His presence was thick. I was having the time of my life. And then all of a sudden, right in the middle of that, he speaks to me. And he says, John, I want you to give me permission to take your life tonight. Wow. And I'm like was that how inconvenient here I am worshiping God and there's this distraction so you know I brush it off and try to keep worshiping but but the presence of the Lord was gone or at least I thought it was he was just yes. manifesting in a very different way <clears throat> wow. and he said it again John I want you to give me permission to take your life tonight wow. and I was disturbed I was I was it was heavy it was severe and I wrestled with it yes. for about 15 minutes and he said it again and I knew this is the last time that he would say it. he says John I want you to give me permission to take your life tonight and immediately I realized, you know, I, if, it, I cannot live my life without the presence of God like I felt when I first came into this room. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go on like this. And I said, God, if this will advance your kingdom, I will die for you. Mm -hmm. And the second I said that, the glory of God filled the room about a hundred times greater than I'd ever felt it in my life. And, you know, a part of me can even, I don't know, you know, look at that as a salvation moment. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I know I was saved already, but... It was something about it where I took up my cross. I thought I was going to die that night. I really, it was that heavy. Thought I was going to die. And I embraced the call. And that's taking up the cross. Yeah, you know, when you say that salvation is a Greek word sozo, which means to be completely delivered. Yes. I mean, in other words, it, it means that he makes you completely whole. Yes. That's really snatched out of darkness into his marvelous light. And it seemed like you had an encounter, sort of like um, Catherine Kuhlman. You're familiar with Catherine yeah. Kuhlman, and, and she just surrendered to God. It's like a surrendering. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's an invitation because I don't know if you can on purpose with your own willpower. I think it's an invitation yep. of being in this present, and then you're granted that open door to move into it. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times we try to make um, God do something, but I think it's me spending time with him yep. and we come to a place where we have enough strength so and it's obvious in that moment god knew you was ready he, yeah he was yeah. He, and he yeah he knew i was ready and yeah. and my life has never been the same since well you know what back in 1991 um you had an experience with the lord or you had an experience with hell oh, gosh, uh, yeah. can, can you enlighten us or share with that yeah yeah um i'll do my best to make it really quick but this is it's an encounter that i had that to say it changed my life is not is such an understatement. I was I was living in an old church building. I was uh, just one of these old 1800s church buildings, and I was kind of the caretaker there. And it was a unique kind of an atmosphere. Went to sleep one night and found myself uh, in a room, a, a single room with a window in front of me, and I'm laying on my stomach, just looking out the window. It's a beautiful sunny day. I was so uh, so relaxed, so comfortable, 
and uh, just enjoyed the moment. And, and there were several scenes that the scene kept changing. So the scene changed and now I could tell that it was getting cloudy outside and maybe a storm was coming and I was laying there and still feeling very comfortable. That was the driving emotion, comfort, just comfort, not concerned about anything at all. And the scene changed again, the storm's approaching, the wind is blowing, the trees starting to, to blow quite a bit, still there, comfortable, it changed again. Storm's closer, the rain's hitting, uh, it, it start, it's threatening, very dark clouds, lightning striking in the background, still comfortable. A couple more times, and finally, finally the atmosphere was so terrifying. Uh, hail was hitting the windows, the windows were bellowing in and out, the tree was bent over, lightning was striking right outside, the, the house was shaking, and it felt like a tornado was on top of me, and, and yet I was still comfortable unconcerned about anything. In that moment, all of a sudden, two hands grabbed my ankles. I was laying on my stomach, grabbed my ankles. I went from perfect comfort to perfect terror in less than a second. And I looked back, I saw, I saw nothing there, but I knew, I knew a demon had my ankles. Mm -hmm. And he started pulling me backwards and pulling me down into the ground. And I was, I was terrified and I was, I mean, it, it's the, it, I was almost going mad. It was, I can't even, I can't think about hell to this day more than five or six seconds because of that encounter. The terror was so horrific. And he's pulling me down, pull, and I kept thinking, how can I be going to hell? How can I be going to hell? How can I be going to hell? It didn't make any sense, it didn't make any, but I knew I was going to hell. And I said, wait a minute, I'll just say, I thought I'll say the name of Jesus, and they said, let me go. And I was so weak, and, and I went to say the name of Jesus, but I couldn't. I could have I said any other word. I could not, it ch I choked on the, on the name of Jesus. And the terror escalated exponentially, second by second. He pulled me down, and as my eyes hit the level of the ground as I was pulling, being pulled to hell, I woke up. I sweat so much, my bed was saturated. The light switch was about six or seven feet away from me, but I, I was too terrified to move out of the corner in the bed. I wouldn't even go turn the light on. I sat up in bed for, forever, terrified. Finally went to sleep, woke up the next morning, and, and it, was a, it was a striking message the Lord gave me. And, and I said, you've got to give me revelation on this. I have no idea what this is about. And he said, John, he said, in the dream, you represent, you represent the church, the sleeping church, the comfortable church, mm -hmm. unconcerned about the storms that are clear and obvious. The signs of the times are not obvious to them. And he said, John, there's, there is a segment of the church that is convinced of their salvation, yet they are not intimate with me and they'll be shocked one day to find themselves in hell. And it was, it was, it messed with my theology. It, me, it, me, it messed with, with, with every part of me, it still messes with me to this day. But it, but it birthed the message in me of intimacy. The Bible says, depart from me. He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. It was, I was never intimate with you. Mm -hmm. And the call to Christ is a call to, it's a call to encounter, it's a call to, to intimacy. It's, it's not repeating a prayer, hoping for the best. It's not a ticket to heaven. You know, it's heaven on earth. It's, it's knowing him intimately. You know, how many rich, rich young rulers do we have in our churches that Jesus actually said, you're not fully surrendered. Mm -hmm. You're not intimate with me. Wow. You know, and it, it's, it's a serious message. It's not one that we like to mm -hmm. maybe deliver all the time because I'm a big believer in joy and life and, mm -hmm. you know, the positive, you know, fire of God and all that. But there's a serious call to the cross. Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, I think that sometimes as we're intimate with the Lord, um, that intimacy really, they that know their God shall be strong yeah. and do exploits. Yeah. And I, I really believe that we're living in a day where uh, it seems like that, that dream that you had 20 years ago uh, is parabolic for today. And it seems like that's where we're going, especially in the comfortable church. And there's no warning. Uh, but I think through power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, we can get people's attention. Yeah. And then we can begin to move into... Um, a greater experience of the glory of God. Yeah, I believe the church has a responsibility, not an opportunity, a responsibility to move in power because uh -huh. the world's not gonna respond to church as usual. Yeah, you know, um, the Bible says in Acts chapter six, verse number four, that they gave themselves continually, yep. that means all the time, in the word of God, in prayer. And I really believe that the fivefold ministry gifts, you know, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, we are called to give ourselves continually to the Word of God in prayer. 
And when we do that, don't you believe the glory will show up in our churches? There'll yeah, it shocks synergy. me. Yeah. It shocks me when, yeah. when it, it saddens me. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge. It's yes. a challenge to me too. Yes. It challenges me when the Bible can be preached mm -hmm. and the, the glory and the fire and the power and the healing isn't there. Mm -hmm. And it, it challenges me. You know, when, when I, I'm in a place where I'm like, you know, more, more should be following my ministry. Mm -hmm. More power, more life, more joy, more freedom, you know? And I think we need to, we need to ask that question. It's like, all right, God, what's, what's the, what is the potential of the word of God here? I mean, it's a living word. You yeah. know, how, what, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting um, that this subject comes up because remember when Joshua was about to take, no, not AI, he was about to take uh, Jericho mm -hmm. and the angel of the, of the Lord of the hosts appeared to him yep. and he says, Joshua says to him, whose side are you on? For us, yeah. And he Great. says, I'm not on anybody's side. The real question is, who's on the Lord's side? Right. So it seems as if God is not necessarily interested in our plans, yeah. but he's interested in his plans. Yeah. And it's not our plan for our life, it's what God, what is your plan for our life? And I think something happens when that heaven and earth connection, when, when there's a monogamous relationship, between God and I, yep. and there's a unified presence. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There's a kissing of heaven and earth coming together in an individual which bursts something wonderful. Yeah, and he says that he'll do more than we could think or ask. Yes. I don't know about you, I'm pretty creative. Yes. I mean, I could think a lot of, a lot of really cool things, mm -hmm. but it excites me. You know, he, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Yes. It excites me that he has ideas way beyond and, I, and, I, and way beyond my ability to, to, to think it out, you know, so what does the church look like to him? What, what, what's coming in the church? You know, I just preached a message on the coming church. You know, what, is the, what does this look like? It doesn't look anything, I don't think it looks anything like we see now. As, as wonderful as the church has done many wonderful things, powerful things, but I believe there's a switch coming. Yes. And God's about to reveal something that we could never imagine. Yes. You know? Amen. You know um, I know you're probably being touched in your heart by this broadcast. Um, you can reach uh, John Burton at johnburton.net. Is that correct? That's correct. Johnburton.net, um, Revival Church backslash the lab. He's in Warren, Michigan. His number is 313-263-4444, www.johnburton.net. Also, um, you're probably listening to us today and you feel a tugging in your heart. You want a deeper encounter with God. And uh, John, just real fast, can you say a short prayer? Because we're going to take a little break that we're going to come in. Can you just look in the camera and, uh, and just say a prayer about that encounter? Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm, I'm just very simply asking. We don't have to beg you. You love us. I'm asking right now that people that are watching this, Light them up. I pray that you would just, just, just let there be a burning that would start in their inner man. God, I pray that there would be a revelation, Lord, of the, of the life, the fire, the wonder, the shock and the awe of the glory of God that they carry. I pray that you would just start to erupt out of them right now. Lord, I pray that they would know that, that man, you've got crazy, amazing, wild, big plans for them. Just cause them to come alive in that. Doesn't matter what they've done, where they've been. None of that matters anymore. All they have to do is say yes, 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 yes. Crave God, crave encounter. God, I pray that you would, you would make this easy for them, just like you did that one night 20 years ago where you changed my life forever and you put the pressure on, but I finally said yes and you, I've never been the same and I pray that would be the case for just so many just regular folks like us, just, just change them, heal them, set them free. Let there be just, let them be healings right now. Cancer gone heart disease heal. I mean, truly the real stuff. And I just, all over the world right now, touch lives, change people, heal them, light them up, cause them to get thrilled and excited about who you are in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Man, we have more with John here in the moment, but right now we're going to take a break and I want you just to enjoy this song by Michael Mayer. If you prayed that prayer with us on today and God touched you, please pick up the phone and call us right here on TCT. We have prayer partners waiting to pray for you and God is going to meet every need in your life. So let's go ahead and be blessed by this song by Michael Mayer, which is entitled Nehemiah's Prayer. God, please, please, please restore life in these 
broken walls burned as they are God please 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 restore life in these broken walls burned as they are oh Lord God of heaven we need to be forgiven the great Awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who do what's right. Please hear our prayer with your eyes and ears. We're so sorry, Lord, for our unfaithful years. Forgive us, restore us, and make us your. Praise God. I know you really enjoyed that song by Michael Mayer. God is such a good God. Uh, he's blessing us with many wonderful musicians and psalmists just like the one you just heard. So please always keep TCT in prayer, Total Christian Television, and remember to support us with your giving, support us with your prayers, because it's broadcast like this one, TCT Alive, that we're able to come into millions of homes around the world and we couldn't do it without your support, without your help. We thank God for the gift of God that's in Dr. Garth Kuntz many years ago, 34 years ago. God touched that man's heart and began to build this great, great television network, TCT, Total Christian Television. I always remember to keep them in prayer, him and his wife and his whole team here. God bless you and we love you and we thank you for everything that you do to help us become everything that God is calling TCT to be. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, it said, let us make man after our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. When God made Adam and Eve, he fellowship with them. The scripture says he walked with them in the cool of the day. They had a relationship. It was a dialogue, not a monologue. He, they spoke toward one another. Uh, God cared about what Adam thought. 
Adam cared about what God thought. And when the fall happened, there was a breach. The voice was almost gone. It was further away, so far away that it scared Adam when God showed up. But Jesus Christ came that he redeemed mankind back to God again. And it's because of him and the power of the Holy Spirit of God that we can have this close, intimate, powerful relationship with the Lord Almighty. I wonder what it would be like if God was so close to you and someone was to leave out of your life and it wouldn't hurt you as much because you made God your center. You've never made man your center, your job your center, things your center, or even church your center, but you made God your center. I wonder what happened if you and God was so close that no one or no thing could control your emotions because you're so caught up in God. The Bible does say in your patience, possess your soul. The Bible says that a man that has no control over his spirit, like a city with broken down walls, I wonder what it would be like if you and God had such a close relationship. He made your walls and your spirit, soul, and body strong that no one can affect the temperature of your attitude except God. That's the place where he wants us to be in. John Burton, he has a wonderful book that's entitled Revelation Driven Prayer. And in this book, he talks about you walking with God and how to hear his voice. Because when you hear his voice, nothing can stop the rhema word that comes from God. Amen? <laughs> that's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, so, John, tell us a little bit about hearing God's voice and give us a couple of experiences that you had. Yeah, throughout Scripture, you know, especially in Revelation, and, but throughout we, we, you know, God says, you know, he who has an ear, Mm -hmm. Let him hear. Yes. The Bible talks about sheep hearing his voice. Yes. And it, you know, we see, you mentioned the rhema. We see the, the rhema throughout, you know, taking up the, the sword, which is the word. That's the rhema word. Yes. It's not that we read the Bible to the devil. And, you know, yes. Have you ever tried that? Yeah. Read the Bible to the devil and everything's yeah. perfect? Yeah. Well, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the rhema. And when the, the logos explodes with the rhema behind it, and then, you know, we're taking that sword and things wow. are happening. That's when life becomes amazing. And you know, hearing the voice of God makes, for me, it makes being a believer like a thrill ride. It's just, it's, it's a stunning adventure. You know, moment by moment by moment, God has access to, to change my mind, change my direction to speak to me. And there's, there's one story that is just powerful. I have so many different things that God has done, but this one, this one's, uh, uh, give you an excellent example of why it's important to hear God's voice. This is, I, I don't believe it's something that we can take lightly. There are lives hanging in the balance. Yes. People are, people are waiting for us to hear God because they can't hear God for themselves. Wow. My church in Colorado, uh, in the Colorado Springs area, there's a town called Manitou Springs, right at the base of Pikes Peak. And uh, a very unique town. There's a lot of witchcraft there, a lot of, uh, really dark place. And God called us to plant a church there. And we did and saw a lot of dramatic things happen. One particular Sunday uh, morning, we were having a great service. It was, it was just full of joy. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, we, we didn't even need an altar call that day. It was one of those, God bless you, you're amazing, let's go out and change the world kind of, kind of days. And uh, right as I was about to dismiss, I mean, people are at the edge of their seats, you know, you, purses are, you know, they're pulling their purses together, keys are rattling, stomachs are growling, people are ready, and they're wanting me to dismiss. I'm, I'm, I'm standing up there, and all of a sudden, I'm about to say, I'm about to release him. God says, John, there's somebody here that's cursing you, your family, and your ministry. And they're speaking death over you, your family, and your ministry. Mm -hmm. Said it as clear as day. And so I'm up there smiling. Everyone's like, go ahead, say it, dismiss us. And I'm thinking, what in the world am I supposed to do with that? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, God, I'm, I, God, do something about it. Mm -hmm. And he says, you do something about it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this authority just rose up in me. And the folks in my church, they understood. They understood when things changed, when time, it was time to get serious with God. And, and I looked out at everybody. I said, listen to me. I said, God just spoke to me. And he said, there's somebody here who's speaking death over my fam me, my family, my ministry, is cursing me, my family, my ministry. I didn't know what I was going to say half a second before I said it, but I was in the spirit. The Bible talks about that. He'll give us the words to say when we need to say it. And, and, I, and I, said, I said, let me tell you something. Number one, and I said something like this, you need to understand that God has a zealous burning love for you. You, you, you are here on purpose. You are here to encounter the lover of your soul. This is, a, this is a serious time for you. But I also said this, and, but I need to tell you 
that I rebuke what you're doing and I will not allow you to speak this over my family and I won't let you speak this over my church or myself and I command you to stop in Jesus' name. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder what I should do now. <laughs> and uh, everyone, you know, everyone's eyes are like this. No one's thinking about going out to eat after, after church now. <laughs> and, and, you know, all, all eyes are on, on me. Mm -hmm. and, and I said this, I said, whoever you are, you need to stand up right now and you need to come down here and you need to see me. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm gone. You know, I've lost my church. I've lost my reputation. My credibility's gone. There's no way someone's going to stand up, you know, after that mm -hmm. and come see me. All of a sudden, very back row, never, never, I saw this girl in my life. She stood up, this tall young lady, and she starts walking very slowly, dramatically down the center aisle. And I'm, and I'm watching this, and her head was bowed low. She couldn't look at me. She couldn't look around, walking very slowly. She gets down to me. I have no clue what I'm even going to say. And I just put the microphone behind my back, and, and I looked at her. She wouldn't look at me. And I said, what's going on? What are you doing? And she said it just like this. I need Jesus. And tears start flowing down my face. And I told her everything that she needed to do to jump right into that fire of God's love. And she got radically saved right there in that moment. She ended up being a missionary to Mozambique with Heidi Baker and doing different things. And, and she later told me the story that she had intentionally contacted me previously over email to gain information about me in the ministry. And, 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 and she had been speaking death and releasing curses. And, she even showed up to the church the night before thinking that wouldn't it be amazing if she actually showed up on a Sunday morning, but there's no way she's gonna show up on a Sunday morning. But she found herself getting in the car the next day, coming to church, sat out in the parking lot, watched as people were coming in, was throwing curses over all of us. And, and she thought to herself again, wouldn't it be funny if I actually went into the building? She's like, there's no way I'm going into that building. But she was, she was compelled. She opened her door and she stood up and she went, she sat inside. And she told me, she said, John, I sat through that whole service cursing you, your, your family, and your ministry, speaking death. And when you, at the end, said what you did, I was raging inside. And there was no way that I was going to stand up and come see you. You've got to be kidding me. But she said, I, I, I could not stay in my seat. My legs picked me up. I walked down, and, and, and my life changed in that moment. And, you know, thinking about this idea of revelation-driven prayer, it's cool to hear God's encouraging prophetic words, mm -hmm. but it's something a whole, it's a whole different level when we understand that our ability to hear God changes destinies, mm -hmm. heaven or hell destinies. Mm -hmm. You know, what would have happened to that young lady? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Would she have gone to hell maybe? Would that have been her last opportunity if I wouldn't have had the guts, mm -hmm. you know, to risk my ministry, to ris risk my reputation? And she's just an amazing person now, you know? Yeah, you know, thank God for you because it's, it's to me, it seems as if the most important person in the whole universe to get to know is the Holy Spirit of God. Man. Is he there is any our peace. Way? He does not just have peace. He is peace. Yeah. He doesn't just have joy. He is joy. Yeah. You know, what happens when you get around somebody that's full of joy and full of love and full of peace? That joy and that love starts coming up on you. Yeah. I really believe that's the power that, da that David had. David spent so much time with God that what was on God got on David. Yeah. And David felt like, listen, hey, listen, I'm God's son, and this is a lion, and this is a bear, and this is Goliath. Come, and, and so there was something about hanging out with God and getting to know him, getting to know his voice that makes a man going from a man to being a God man. I hate to use that word, but, but Jesus did say some things that refer to that because if you are a son of God, then yeah. there must be some God nature on the inside of you. In the invitation, it says, he says, be ye followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises. The Bible says about Paul, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The big one is this, Ephesians 5, it says this. He says, be ye followers of God as dear children. The word follow is a Greek word, mimetes, which means to mime, to mimic, to act like. In other words, act like you are like your heavenly father. Hey, man, man. What, what would that look like if yes. we really did it? I mean, it's serious. Absolute 
unbelievable confidence, tapping into things that, that far exceed our mind, our psyche. Uh, something that you said earlier, and there's probably some viewers that don't recognize the difference between a Logos and a Rhema, because a Logos is God's written word, mm -hmm. and a Rhema is the word that comes out of his mouth. For example, Matthew 4, 3, the Bible says, the temper came to him and he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. Jesus answered and said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word, the Greek says rhema, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's so right. it's not just the written word, but as you having an encounter with God through the vehicle of the written word, but then he speaks a rhema, a right now word to a believer. And that's yeah, and just, even the yeah. logos, when there's, when there's rain, there could be rhema action on the logos, just like yes. you just said. So, you know, but you that's have, how the rhema turn, the logos turns into a rhema. That's right, that's right. You know, he walked among us and rhemas was constantly coming out of his mouth as he was speaking. Yeah. And the lady with the issue of blood, it was a rhema to her. Right. If you but touch the hem of his garment, you be made whole. Yeah. The Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. But the rhema is, there's a good one right there. There's a good one right there. You know? There you go. <laughs> I found a good one. <laughs> That's twice now. Yeah. <laughs> so give us another example of the rhema word of God. Yeah. There, here's, a, here's another powerful example. We, uh, um, we, have, we, had, we did something when I lived in Manitou Springs called Prayer in the Cave. And there's an actual cave system there. And we'd go into the cave. We'd take mission teams in there and we'd be in perfect darkness for four or five hours. We wouldn't leave. And we would go th through seasons of prayer. I'm praying in the spirit, repentance, worship, and mm -hmm. amazing environment. Well, there was a team actually from Michigan that was there. And there was a young lady. It was a week long uh, uh, mission adventure there in Manitou Springs. And throughout the entire week, this young lady wasn't connecting with God. She couldn't find him. I, my heart was breaking for her. I would pray for her. I'd ask her how she was doing. Are you connecting with God yet? No, I'm not feeling anything. And she was just as real as they come. Well, on the final night that of, of that week, it was it was a Sunday night. So we had a, had a little service in the church that night, kind of a special service. And then we were going to go into the cave. And and I looked at her. I said, so is it happening yet? She's like, well, I think maybe it's going to happen, but nope, not yet. And, uh, and I was just, I wanted so much for her to break through. I had had a, like the pinched nerve from hell. If you ever had one of those, I mean, just, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize how much from hell it was. It was, <laughs> it, I, you know, and you'll hear it in a minute. It was insane. I mean, my arm hurt so bad for months and months and months right up in here. And, and I just wanted to encourage her in any way that I could. And I heard she was going to chiropractic school and I said, hey, hey, I hear you got the, the anointing of, of chiropractic on you. Would you pray for me? And she was real soft-spoken, yeah, I'll pray for you. And she just put her hand on my shoulder. Dear Jesus, I pray for Pastor John and that you would heal his shoulder. And she just went on for two or three minutes, real sweet. And, and she looked at me, she said, is it healed? And I said, nope, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. So then we go into the cave. We go through all these seasons. And, and the cave is an, is an experience in revelation-driven prayer. We go through these seasons of repentance and praying in the spirit and all that. And all of a sudden, I, I coach people on how to hear God. I'm like, all right, now you're going to start hearing God. He's, and I explain how that works. You can maybe see pictures or have impressions. And so people will start to say things and someone else will say, whoa, I was getting the exact same thing. And they'd never prophesied in their life or heard God's voice or they didn't think they did. And so we're going through that season and, and, uh, and I'm sitting there in the cave up against the cave wall. It's pitch dark. No one can see me. I mean, tears in my eyes. I mean, I'm pushing against the wall trying to find some relief. It, pain was awful and right before we were kind of move going to move into our last little season before we left the cave I heard this voice and it was this girl her name is Devin and she said Pastor John she's on the other side of the cave somewhere and, and yeah she said it's Devin I said hey Devin she said uh you know I I have a word for you oh okay but it's not good I'm like Oh no, <laughs> what's God telling her about me? And uh, I'm like, you know, that's okay. What is it? Just real soft spoken. And she said, well, she said, I don't know if this is really happening or not. And I remember Manitou Springs, lots of, lots of witchcraft. And, and she said, I don't know if this is actually happening or if it's a symbol of something. And, but I see someone has a voodoo doll and it's, and it's you. And, and I see they have this pin and they're continually sticking you in the shoulder with this pin. And, uh, and I, and, I, and I feel like God wants to set you free. And I'm like, all right. And I took, in that moment, I told everybody, I said, all right, everybody, here we are in an experiment of revelation-driven prayer. And, and this is where we hear God, we respond to what he's saying, and things happen. 
and, and do you believe that what she's hearing is God? Yeah. Do you believe that God wants to heal me right now? Yeah. Faith starts to rise up in that place. It, it was thick. And so I said, you know, sweet Devin, soft-spoken Devin, would you pray for, would you just pray for me? And she said, sure. All of a sudden, this echoey cavern, I hear this voice, devil, <laughs> get your hands off Pastor John. 30 people in the cave starts roaring. Ah, this atmosphere of fire just erupts. All of a sudden, my whole shoulder starts burning. And I'm, th I'm like, dude, you know, great man of faith here. I'm like, no way, right? I'm like, and I'm testing it every way that I can. The fire's going up and down my arm. I'm uh -huh. feeling this burning, and I'm like, whoa. Uh -huh. And I tell everybody, like, listen, I just got healed. There's fire all over my arm. I mean, we're there in the cave. I thought maybe it's like glowing in the dark. I mean, it wasn't, but it was like scorching me. Mm -hmm. And I was completely, entirely healed in that moment. And because, now here's what happened. Because of Devin hearing God's voice, not only was I wildly healed, I mean, drama right here in the cave, I was healed, but she was rocked by God herself. Wow. I mean, and, and see, these, these stories, I have so many of these stories, yes. you know, and, and I'm just humbled. I'm like, man. Let's yeah. get this done. Yeah, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the scripture says, where the word of the king is, there is power. Yeah. You know, oftentimes when I would read that scripture, except in this moment right here, it just clicked in my head that is when we get a revelation. When we say revelation, of course, revelation in Greek is the Greek word apokalupsis, which means something that's hidden, you know, and this God revealing something, you know, yep. uh, and his insight uh, is, is as if you got a red phone to God and he's giving you top secret. Um, information uh, and so it's like man we capture that word that God is speaking right now there's power in it yeah and there's something that I call uh, addiction to petition or petitionitis mm -hmm. where you know there's appropriate times to petition the Bible tells us that mm -hmm. <clears throat> but but we can get addicted to it mm -hmm. where and, and if let's be honest let's just be real how many times do we pray we ask God for something it just doesn't happen I mean let's just be honest you know let's you know Aunt Betty's Bum mm -hmm. hip. Let's, you know, well, she, Aunt Betty still has a bum, bum hip. Yeah. You know, praying for money. You know, money's not coming in. But when we when we are driven by revelation, meaning we're leaving everything aside. It's like you know, God tells me a lot. John, I don't want you to waste any time in prayer. Don't waste your energy praying on things that are good things, but are, they're not on my radar right now. Oh, gotcha. Leave all of that alone. Mm -hmm. And boy, I tell you what, man, my life has changed in that. I've come alive. And then I'm like, okay, what do you want me to hit on? He speaks to me what he wants me to pray. And then it happens mm -hmm. because when he's on something in a moment mm -hmm. and we're in agreement with it and we don't just petition hoping for the best, mm -hmm. but we know God wants this. Now we decree it. We declare it. We establish it as authorities of heaven. We're ambassadors. We have, a, we have authority. We declare it and it, and it happens. You know, I've, I've seen some financial miracles. I mean, all sorts of healings, you know, that are revelation driven. Yeah. You know, uh, just like the other week in prayer, oh, really, I was getting ready for a service, and we believe like you believe, by praying in the Spirit, private prayer, and that devotion to the Lord. And uh, right when I was about to speak, I felt like the Lord said, calibrating. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, like how you can be going in the wrong direction and your, your, your GPS system has to recalibrate to get us back right. And I said, calibrating, calibrating, calibrating. And the presence of God was on calibrating. And he began to shift everything in my life right after that service and gave me wisdom to bring our church to the direction that God has called us to go into. Wow. And I feel deeply in my heart that God is calibrating you and he's doing something wonderful right now in your life. He's beginning to switch things. He's beginning to change things. He's about to bring you right on course again. And God is going to cause everything that has happened to you to work together for your good. It's something about the Lord that he's able to redeem time. He's able to calibrate and bring you to a place where you would have been had you never walked away from him. And I believe this is your moment, this is your time, and this is your opportunity.